Welcome to this tutorial request. In this video we're going to be creating a very simple visual effects companion flying with you. So let's jump into it. Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So this here is essentially what we will be creating today. We have this little Niagara effect that's very very simple and just you can make it as advanced as you want, of course. But this is what we will be creating today to symbolize our visual effects companion that's following us around like a little fairy or something. And uh, when we move around, the little companion will make sure to find its way back to its little position next to us all the time when we're moving around. Uh, with a slight delay effect to make sure that it doesn't feel too snappy and feels a little bit more alive and a little bit more uh, fluid essentially. So that's the goal for today. So here we are inside of Unreal Engine version 4.26. This is the animation template that was made available from the Slay animation with uh, the Echo character. If you want to download it and follow along. So this is what we will be creating uh, the character for, or the little companion for, essentially. So we will have a little companion that will fly around with us here. And we're going to keep it very simple. We're going to make a very simple visual effect, and we're going to have a very simple system for it moving around. Now, uh, to begin with, uh, we will create a class to make the actual companion. We'll make it of the actor type. We can call it bp underscore companion. Now, in here, we can just have something very simple as a placeholder to begin with. So we can have a static mesh. And we can choose to have the cube. Uh, we don't have a cube in this. Never mind, we will... Um, doesn't really matter, I guess. I can. We can pick one of the other static meshes that we have here. So, ramp static mesh over here. And we can have it on a scale. Well, this is a good scale. We currently have this at 0 0.1 for all the settings. So that will be good and small, I think. If we were to drag it into the world, you can see that it's going to be this big. And that works fine. We will just have it as a placeholder. We will replace it soon enough. But essentially, we want this companion to fly around next to our character. Now, how can we accomplish this? Well, if we go to our character, we can make sure that we have it in alignment with our actual character. So we can add a component here while, while having the mesh selected, it will end up on the right uh, level of the hierarchy. We can add a spring arm. And that one can be called spring arm, it doesn't matter that much. Underneath the spring arm, we can then add another component. We can add a scene component, like so. And now we can adjust our uh, spring arm here. So we can do a few things. We can set up how we want this to uh, look and act and what kind of position it wants to be. Uh, for example, we have the target arm length we can play around with. So we can change this around. You can see that this red line here represents where an object will be. We can add offsets to it as well. We can have like different values for that. We can reduce this to zero if we want to. We have a lot of different options of how we want to position this. We can also make sure that it is going to be on a certain height. <clears throat> so that it is elevating somewhere around our shoulders. Uh, you can just play around with these values to get a value that you want. Now, uh, we can also rename this to something more appropriate, like a companion location. And then we simply want to have it so that our character loads this in. So we'll go to our event graph. We'll see if we have a begin play event. We do have one of those. We're they're doing some things here, doesn't really concern us that much. After this, we'll just create this. So we'll spawn an actor from class. We'll pick the BP companion we just created. It wants a transform and location and everything like that. 
I'm gonna give myself a little bit more space. Like so. And this is fine to begin with. After that, we can just say attach actor to component. We can choose to use our companion component, companion location here as our parent component. So the scene location we created, uh, we will keep world location on all of these. Compile and save. Actually, I think that will probably be bad if we spawn it in over. Yeah, let's do instead snap to target so it gets its uh, location immediately. That'll probably be better, like so. So if we were to start now, you can see that we have this uh, object next to us. And if we walk around, you can see that it's following us and keeping that location at all times. So that's the start. Now we want to have, uh, first of all, we're going to need the character to move a little bit faster so we can see what it actually looks like. You may not need to change this because you might have a different project, but for me, I will be needing to find my character, get speed. Let's tap in also walk. So our max walk speed is 147. We'll set this to the default, which is 600. And now when we move, you can see that it's following along just like before. But now we can actually tweak this a little bit. So our spring arm here now works uh, instantaneously with what we have currently attached to it. But we can add lag to it. So if we type in lag, you can see that we have a camera lag here. If we tick this box and we set this value to something like one, compile, save, run, you'll see that the, the, the companion sort of takes a while to get into position it is it it has a certain speed now assigned to it to lag after with and if we were to choose something like three maybe it'll probably keep a little bit more of a snappy positioning so it gets into position a little bit faster however now that that looks okay you can see that whenever we turn it sort of immediately turns with us that's not what we want. So we want to go over here and also with enable camera lag, we also have enable camera rotation lag. And here we can also affect how much it will lag after before it's reorienting itself with us. So maybe a value of two, compile, save. And now when we move around, we can see that it's being a little bit more sluggish with it's following us around and that will probably look a lot better for this. So these are values that I have chosen here. You can choose to have completely different values, do something that you like, that, that's perfectly fine. But for the parts of this tutorial, we can now move on to the next step, which is creating a very simple effect. We will be keeping this very simple. Uh, in case you're not in a project that doesn't have Niagara, you need to make sure that you have um, that activated in your plugins. You go to plugins and you find Niagara and make sure that you have Niagara activated so you can uh, create visual effects like this. But you just right click and choose effects and then we choose Niagara system. We can now choose to take a new system from a template so we get something to start off with. We can take our uh, directional burst here will probably be fine. And we can call it uh, Niagara NS for Niagara system and uh, underscore companion. We open that up and to begin with, we can remove this location based ribbon. We don't need a ribbon. Now we just have a directional burst. Uh, this burst has gravity among other things. We don't want to have gravity for this specific effect that we're creating now. So we can just press delete to remove that. Uh, we can go to our scale color. We can remove the Z value, which represents blue uh, because X, Y, and Z is R, G, and B. So to get a yellow color in this case, which I want to have, I want to have one in X and one in Y. And then we can also remove drag. We're not going to be needing that. 
we can go to our uh, emitter update. Actually, our yeah, our meter update has a spawn burst in instantaneous right here. Uh, we can instead do a we type in spawn and add a spawn rate module, and we can say something like uh, 50, let's say, and we remove the spawn burst instantaneous. We also have a velocity in cone. We don't really need that, so we can remove that. Now we just have a single point where they're spawning in, so we might want to have something a little bit more fun. So let's add a sphere location that allows the particles to spawn in a sphere, which we designate the radius for. We can try something like 40. Now we'll have tiny little droplets forming. Uh, in addition to that, we want to have this uh, looping. So we'll go to clicking on the emitter itself. We go to loop behavior and choose infinite. So it keeps looping on. Uh, when it comes to the sprite itself, we can go into sprite render. It has by default here velocity aligned. We don't want that. We want to have it unaligned. We want it to face the camera. And this is fine. We can also go to, let's see, where should this be? Initialize particle, because if we zoom in on these particles, we can see that some of them are elongated along. It seems like the Z axis in this case, but we can go here to sprite attributes and make it instead of random non-uniform, we can make it random uniform. That looks not good either. We can stop this from playing so much. Just have it something like that. And let's see here. We probably want to reduce this to some other values. We can wait with that for now. We're going to be wanting to... Here, we have a scale... Actually, let's play this and see. So we have a scale sprite by size and speed. So if we uncheck that one, we see that they become round instead. So this is not the module that we want if we want to have uniform uh, particles. So now we're starting to get something that looks okay-ish. Um, let's create a copy of this. Copy and paste. And let's create something of a center light ball and then some spread out particles around it. So we can go to this and say, sphere location for this should be much smaller. Let's say 10, then we'll get a cluster in the middle and we can also do something like uh, particle spawn over here on the first one and we can say that its size should be instead of from 5 to 10 like the ones we have in the middle right now we can say 2 to 4 or something so that means that the surrounding particles will be much smaller and now it's starting to look like something i think to give the effect a little bit more life, we can probably go and add a curl and noise force. We can put this to something like, well, let's see what this looks like. We need to make sure that the curl noise force is also above the solve forces and velocity to make sure that it's actually making use of it. So now you see that particles are moving around a little bit. That looks okay. Let's try a higher value, see what that's like. 50, uh, looks fine. Uh, we can copy this node and we can paste it over here. Make sure it's above the forces, like so. We can have slightly less curl noise for this one, maybe 10, so that the center doesn't swing around as much as the outer parts. And let's save this and bring it into the world and see what it looks like. So we go to simulate. So this is what it looks like currently. It looks okay. Maybe we can bring a little bit more life into it. Uh, if we go to the scale color and change the values from 10, 1, 1, 0 to instead be 10, 10, 0, then you see we get a little bit more of a missive feeling to it. Uh, checking it out on the map. Looks okay. It's a very bright map, so it's difficult to see, but uh, that's starting to look okay, I think. So now we can go to our companion. 
we can say on its event begin play, we remove the other ones. We can say spawn Niagara system attached. We can make sure that it is uh, attached to the default scene route. We can choose our template for a Niagara system. Location, rotation doesn't need to be. Uh, keep relative offset is fine. Auto destroy checked out, auto activate checked. This looks perfectly okay. And now if we just gonna compile and save this and then change this from simulate to play again. Also going to make sure to remove this old effect and also going to go to the companion and hide this static mesh for now. See what it looks like. So this is what it now looks like in our uh, project here. So this is our little VFX companion. And if we walk around, we get this sort of trail and it ends up being next to us and fluttering about a little bit like that. So this is how we can create a VFX companion essentially. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.